and the 2080 beats the 1080 Ti? Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to GamerMeld. I've got a couple really interesting stories for you today. To start, Hard OCP, the ones who brought light to NVIDIA's GPP program, revealed some pretty unnerving stuff if true. So what's going on? Well, for starters, according to Hard OCP, NVIDIA is forcing their board partners to reveal who they're sending review units to. They claim to have received forwarded emails from reviewers of AIBs requesting the name, email address, and phone number of the person who's to do the review. And all of this comes right back to NVIDIA. Supposedly, NVIDIA has put together a list of approved reviewers and are essentially telling board partners who they can send their own cards to for a review. What's even worse is that NVIDIA is reportedly not allowing their board partners to send drivers with their review units. Apparently, reviewers have to first sign NVIDIA's NDA before receiving access to a secured site to download said drivers. So yeah, some pretty crazy stuff. Now, I will say that I probably wouldn't have reported this story if it wasn't for it being hard OCP, but there are some things about it that I wasn't keen on, like their feeling on the old NDA story when a lawyer from Gamers Nexus went through it and claimed it like, uh, making a mountain of a molehill. So it's tough to say whether some of this is a little inflammatory or not. I know how easy it is to jump on the anti-big business bandwagon and root for the underdog. Trust me, I get that, but it's good to be as unbiased as possible. Not that hard OCP isn't unbiased, I'm just not sure and they seem to have their own lawyer who interpreted it differently. Regarding the story itself and what it means, it's hard to say. I mean, it's pretty well known in the industry that Nintendo has a list of reviewers they like to review their games and will copyright strike anyone else. Okay, so here it is. Match third party content. What? What the f Seriously? This is what you do on YouTube? That and any company obviously wants the best reviews they can for their product. But we get to a place where it seems to border on unethical. Nvidia has a right to send their product to whoever they want, but why do they feel the need to control their partners like this? That and if it's true, it's a sign that Nvidia isn't all that confident in their newest products. Of course, since it's a little more complicated this time around, with ray tracing being a big selling point instead of just more frames, they may just want to ensure it's well done and all the points are made. But then why control your partners like that? They should know who will review their product and explain everything properly. Either way, I definitely suggest waiting until the cards are released before making a purchasing decision. And I will say that before reading this, I was trying to get review units of their upcoming cards, but I'm a little concerned now. I certainly don't want to sign an NDA that somehow forces me into giving a good review or anything like that. Not that I'm necessarily saying it's there, I'm just not sure. Either way, this may be something to worry about. Before I get into the next story, today's video is sponsored by Mastrop, who teamed up with an actual audio company to bring you the PC37X, a gaming headset that's open back for serious presence in games. I've personally used them for a while now, and they're quite possibly the lightest, most comfortable headset I've ever had. If you're interested, check out the thousands of other reviews on it and get yours by following the link in the description below. Lastly for today is a leaked benchmark on the RTX 2080. It's a little concerning considering my last story, so who even knows if it's using the most recent drivers. Regardless though, it's from 3 d Mark's Time Spy, and given it comes with the same memory configuration and speed as both the 2070 and 2080, it can be either card. With that said, it paints what I'd say to be the most likely possibility for NVIDIA's upcoming 2080. The GPU scored a 10,030, which is actually around 6% higher than the 1080 Ti, and over 35% faster than the 1080, which is definitely a decent jump, but I'm sure plenty of you will be disappointed. With that said, I do feel obligated to point out the fact that synthetic benchmarks don't take NVIDIA's DLSS into account, which is their new tech that utilizes the new card's tensor cores and can have some sweet performance gains, albeit requiring developer support. So yeah, without all the new tech built into these cards, we'd be looking at a fairly underwhelming generation, at least from what we see so far. But there is new tech, it's just hard to say how big of a deal it'll be until we see how much developer support they get. But there won't be much developer support if a ton of people don't buy them. So yeah, we have a very unfortunate catch-22. The question is, can NVIDIA overcome it? So while that does it for today, what do you think of NVIDIA's reported involvement in reviews? Let me know down in the comments below. Plus, don't forget to check out the PC37X in the description. And as always, have a great day.